Hey there, I'm Molly from SRAM, and today I wanna to walk you through a semi-regular bike check that you can easily perform at home that will make for safer rides and fewer trail side issues. Parts of this check should be performed before every ride, while other parts can be done every few weeks or about as often as you wash your bike. Throughout the video, I'll offer service suggestions and we'll regularly reference our service materials. But if you're ever unsure about a procedure, please reach out to your local professional bicycle mechanic for assistance. Prior to every ride, you should clean and lubricate your chain. Keeping your chain lubricated will drastically extend the life of your drivetrain and relieve friction between all the moving parts. After brushing off any dirt, apply oil to the rollers starting at the power lock or power link for a reference point and work your way entirely around the chain. Make sure to wipe away the excess oil with a lint-free towel before riding and follow the lube manufacturer's guidelines. Watch our drivetrain cleaning video for more information on properly degreasing and lubing your drivetrain. Since your tires control your traction on trail, you should check your tire pressure before heading out on each ride. On most tires, there's a suggested range of tire pressure printed on the sidewall. There may also be a maximum pressure rating for the rim. Make sure to use the lower of those two ratings to stay safe. Your preference may vary based on trail conditions, but make sure that your tires are not so soft that you can press them all the way into the rim. You'll want enough air pressure to get traction without jeopardizing your rims. For consistent tire pressure readings on your head unit, consider using Cork's tire TireWiz wireless pressure sensors. And if you're unsure what tire pressure you should be running, consult the new AXIS online pressure guide at axis.sram.com forward slash tire pressure guide. You'll also want to make sure that your through axles or quick releases are tight and seated all the way through the fork and dropouts. Thread your through axles in until they are entirely engaged and you can close the lever. Make sure that if there is a release lever, it's out of the way of the travel of the fork and that it won't get caught on anything while riding. You can tell if the quick release is tight enough when it leaves an impression on your palm and cannot be turned after it's been closed. If your through axle doesn't have a lever, set a torque wrench to the manufacturer's torque specifications and then tighten the through axle to that value. To use a torque wrench, find the correct size bit for your through axle and install it into the torque wrench. Then set the dial on the wrench to the desired spec and rotate until you feel the click. Check your drivetrain functionality to make sure that shifting is smooth and your derailleur hanger is straight. A bent derailleur hanger will cause poor shifting performance and will cause accelerated wear on the drivetrain. To make sure that your derailleur hanger is straight, remove the rear derailleur from the hanger and let it dangle by the chain. Next, use a derailleur hanger tool to align the axis of the hanger with the straight axis of the wheel. If you've aligned your derailleur hanger already and your shifting still feels suboptimal, consult our Eagle rear derailleur adjustment video to learn how to adjust the B-gap and limit screws on your rear derailleur. Next, you should degrease and clean your drivetrain, including the cassette, chain, chain ring, and derailleur. You should also check your components for damage and replace any parts that show excessive wear. If you're riding a cable actuated drivetrain, make sure that your cable tension is properly adjusted before riding. For axis drivetrains, check and make sure that your batteries are charged by looking for a green light when you press the axis button on each component. If the light flashes red rather than green, your batteries need to be charged or replaced. If you're riding an EMTV, inspect the chain ring, chain, and cassette for visual damage, as these parts are likely to see more wear and tear on an electronically assisted bike. If you notice any damage, consult your local bike shop to discuss your options. Perform a quick headset check by placing one hand on the front brake and the other on the bike at the base of the stem and gently rock the bike forward and back. You shouldn't feel any play between the frame and the stem. And if you do, review your headset manufacturer's instructions for adjustment. Now, let's check your brakes. For disc brake bikes, lift up the front wheel and spin it. Check that your rotor is clearing the brake pads and that your front brake is working. Pull the lever and watch for the wheel to stop spinning. If the wheel does not stop, this is an indication that your brakes may need servicing. Perform the same check with your rear brake. Do you hear rubbing between your rotors and your pads? If so, you may need to adjust your caliper or straighten your rotor. Next, take note of how far your lever pulls inward. Does it feel normal? If your lever pulls all the way to the bar, this could mean that your caliper pistons could use an advancement, that your brake pads need a replacement, or the system may need to be bled. 
Keep in mind that SRAM brake pads should be replaced once the full pad measures less than three millimeters in width, including the metal backing plate. SRAM rotors should be replaced when the track measures 1.55 millimeters or less. Check out our brake pad replacement video for more information on inspecting your brake pads for wear and how to replace them. Checking your cranks for play is always a good idea. Push inward on the pedals while holding the bike as stable as you can. If you feel play coming from the bottom bracket area, you may need to tighten your cranks or check the bottom bracket for play. If there is play in your bottom bracket, consult your local bike mechanic or consider replacing the bottom bracket. Also, inspect your cranks for damage or excessive wear. On-trail crank failure can result in serious injury. After checking your cranks, check that the bolts on your cockpit are tight and torqued to spec. Using a torque wrench is the safest way to achieve this. The clamps on these SRAM mountain bike brake levers require a T25 and should be torqued to 5.5 Nm. The bolts on this truvative stem should be torqued to 5 Nm. For your bike, reference the user manual or printing on the components for your specific torque requirements. Be sure to use the lesser of the two torque specs when tightening your stem faceplate bolts around your bars. Carbon bars will likely have a lower torque spec than aluminum bars, and it's very important not to over-tighten these bolts. Lastly, on the cockpit, make sure that your grips won't spin while you're riding by hand tightening the bolts with the appropriate hex wrench. The torque value for seat clamp bolts are varied and specific to each company, but we recommend that you torque your clamp bolt to the lowest of the two numbers between the clamp and the seat post. The RockShox reverb that we have on this bike is rated for up to 6.7 Nm, but the frame maximum is 6.2 Nm, so we're going to set the torque to 6.2. You can easily check the bolt tightness with a torque wrench. A suspension check is always good practice. First, wipe down the fork upper tubes and rear shock damper body with a clean, lint-free towel, making sure to remove any dirt or debris that might be caught on the wiper seals. From the front of the bike and holding onto the handlebars, press down on your fork and then release. Was the fork particularly easy to compress? You may have too little air in the system. Did the fork hardly move under your body weight? Perhaps you have too much pressure, or maybe the fork is locked out. Most RockShox forks have air pressure suggestion guidelines on the back of the fork on the lower left leg. Follow these guidelines to get your air pressure in range for proper sag. You can also download the Trailhead app or visit trailhead.rockshox.com for more specific fork setup recommendations. Perform a similar check with your rear suspension. Grab a friend, if you've got one handy, and ask them to hold the bike steady while you press your weight into the pedals to engage the rear shock. Make sure that the shock is not locked out. Perform a SAG setup procedure to achieve optimal use of your RockShox suspension products. And for more information on suspension setup, review our suspension tuning manual or review our fork and shock SAG setup videos. Lastly, we will inspect the wheels and tires. Make sure that your wheels are true by lifting up the bike and spinning each of the wheels. Inspect them one at a time. If you notice any major hops in the rotation, inspect the rim for damage and the spokes for tension. You might need to have your wheels tensioned and trued. You should also routinely check your hub bearings. Bearings should feel smooth and resistance free. If you feel excessive grit or friction in a hub bearing, consider replacing the bearing for a smoother ride quality. If you have tubeless tires, consider the last time the sealant was replaced. Tubeless sealant only lasts for so long before it becomes ineffective. To learn how to replace the sealant in a tubeless wheel with tire was installed, watch our tire with sealant injection video. And this concludes our routine mountain bike check. This simple inspection will help identify and fix issues before they become real problems out on the trail. And will help to provide you with many miles of smooth, quiet, and safe riding on your SRAM and RockShox products. Subscribe to the SRAM Tech YouTube channel for more videos like this one, and thank you for watching. Subscribe!